Hello, Bjorn here with Unquire for this week. Today we are exploring um, what I'd like to think of as Jesus' invitation for us to dance, for Jesus invita inviting us, as it were, to uh, take part in his life. So we have invitational music tonight. Um, so you can check your dance cards and see if you have uh, room for that invitation on it. The first thing that we'll explore tonight is I danced in the morning. And uh, welcome, John. I danced in the morning uh, was published in the 1960s, and uh, it is a text written by Sidney Carter, who was an Englishman. Uh, I danced in the morning thinks of Jesus as the Lord of the dance, uh, as the piper who pipes for us to join in the dance of the stars of creation. Uh, he was born in England, was a choir boy, and uh, entered into the life of a church musician uh, fairly early in life. However, World War II interrupted, and uh, he became a conscientious objector because he was an ardent pacifist and joined the ambulance brigade in the war. Um, and so he served in that way. After the dance, I'm sorry, after World War II, um, the dance continued for him, and uh, he joined forces with the uh, folk music uh, stream that was happening at that point in history, and wrote several hymns that entered into sort of that, that uh, 1960s ethos, uh, and The Lord of the Dance is one of them. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me, and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you on wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. After the war, uh, he became uh, involved with the Quakers and uh, was sort of a nominal Quaker for the rest of his life. Um, he set this tune to um, not the uh, an American folk tune, uh, a Shaker tune, um, a different sect, um, and we know this tune as uh, "Tis a Gift to Be Simple." Welcome, Jodell, um, and. <laughs> So often um, in the uh, performances of Appalachian Spring by Aaron Copeland. So that's sort of an American tune that has crossed over um, and spread around the world. Uh, the Shakers believed in a lot of odd things, um, including not reproducing, but uh, left some really good music behind as their sort of musical offspring. And uh, people have appropriated and mined that for its sort of... Um, hopeful and almost utopian sort of um, ethos that it's had. So we'll sing through the Lord of the Dance. Um, you can join in on the chorus, dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the Dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. <laughs> in the morning when the world was begun and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you 
all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance at me. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance at ye, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance at ye. So again, we have this invitation to take part in uh, this unfolding that Jesus is calling us into. Uh, if you have a hymnal and are following along, that's not in our hymnal. It was in the old brown supplement to the LBW that came out in the early 90s, uh, but it didn't find its way into uh, later publications. However, it is um, in lots of other Christian denominational hymnals, and I thought with the story of the calling of the fishermen on Sunday, we should sing it, and uh, especially since the tune was familiar to most people. Moving along to a different invitational uh, experiment, we have They Cast Their Nets in Galilee, and this will be new for everyone. The text has appeared before. Uh, the text is in the old LBW, and if you have that at home, you can find the text at 449-449. However, it did not find its way into our current hymnal. And we are using a tune that uh, comes to us from the composer David Hurd, who's an African-American composer. Uh, he taught for many years church music at the General Seminary in New York and uh, is a wonderful composer. Um, he's written organ works, um, chamber works, all kinds of different things. And he's written uh, uh, a collection of hymns, basically a little hymnal of his own with his own music uh, with many texts. And uh, this text uh, comes to us from William Alexander Percy, and he was a Southerner. Uh, he was from uh, Greenville, Mississippi, and uh, came from wealth, however, served during the First World War, and uh, came home and kind of used poetry to kind of uh, deal with some of those emotions um, and the trauma of war. Um, and he wrote some religious poetry, and They Cast Their Nets in Galilee has found its way into several denominational hymnals. Um, I served in Episcopal Church before coming to CTK, and uh, they sang this text to a different tune, which has some merit on its own, but I recently discovered this tune, which I think marries the text so much better than anything I've experienced before, including the old LBW. Um, that we sang in my church growing up. They cast their nets in Galilee, just off the hills of brown, such happy, simple, simple fisher folk before the Lord came down. Contented, peaceful fishermen before they ever knew the peace of God that filled their hearts brimful and broke them true too. Young John, who trimmed the flapping sail, homeless in Patmos died, Peter, who hauled the teeming net, head down, was crucified. The peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Yet let us pray for but one thing, the marvelous peace of God. So we have the disturbing and marvelous and wonderful and upsetting peace of God that throws our world into disarray, um, upsets the status quo. Um, and I, I like to think that Martin Luther King Jr., whose day we celebrate today, um, knew something about that disturbance that happens um, when we agree to fully embody and live out uh, our Christian vocation, as it were. As I said, the tune comes to us from David Hurd. He wrote this in 1999, and um, it has sort of this wonderful um, undulating feel to it. Um, I'll play through it once. Dawn. 
da 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 So we have this sort of gentle flow back and forth of the phrases, um, and I think that that sense of water, that lapping of the water at the shore, um, at least for me, that's coming through in 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 the melody and in the accompaniment part, especially. Um, so let's sing through this once. If you have the text, great. If not, just sit back and uh, listen and get familiar with the pace of the tune and uh, and the text as it comes by and we'll have this sung uh, together in community on Sunday. for but one thing, the marvelous peace of God. I think this is something that resonates with us so well these days as we um, realize the cost that comes with living peaceful, kind, authentic lives um, and how it odds too often that is with the world. Uh, the text reminds us of the call of that, those first disciples. Um, John uh, if if you're conflating John the Apostle with John the the um, of of the Apocalypse, uh, John the Revelator, uh, who authored the uh, final book of the Bible, um, homeless on Patmos died. Uh, we know that John the Evangelist died a very old man, but also a very poor man, and we know that uh, Peter paid the final price just as Jesus did um, and was crucified. Uh, tradition says upside down because he didn't want to be crucified the same way that our Lord was. He didn't feel worthy to be crucified right side up. So um, he was had his head upside down. Um, so that peace of God um, that is wonderful and that we still strive for, but um, that unsettles our life. So Jesus is calling us to that. So will dance accordingly. The final tune that we are being invited to this weekend is Jesus Calls Us O'er the Tumult. 
And uh, if you're following along in our Cranberry Hymnal, that is at 696, 696, Jesus Calls Us. And if you have the old LBW at home, that's 494 in that volume. Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. This was written specifically for the uh, feast day of St. Andrew, which happens, um, kicks off the church year, the 30th of November. So that's the first uh, feast of the church because Advent usually falls around that time. Cecil Francis Alexander, we've encountered her before. She's written in several texts. Um, and our hymn of the month for January, I bind unto myself today, uh, comes from her pen. She rewrote into English um, a translation of the prayer of St. Patrick, St. Patrick's Breastplate from the original Gaelic. Uh, she wrote such hymns as um, Once in Royal David City, There is a Green Hill Far Away, lots of Sunday school hymns, All Things Bright and Beautiful. So she was a very prolific uh, composer of texts. She was the daughter of a clergyman. She married a clergyman, uh, could not have children of her own, and spent her life caring for uh, Sunday school students and the poor of her parishes and uh, for six whole weeks every day tended a woman with uh, a foot infection. They lived in Ireland during the worst part of Irish history, uh, the Great Famine, and uh, ministered to the people that were in great suffering at that point. So um, even though she came from sort of that landed English gentry that was occupying Ireland at the time, um, she did put her money where her mouth was and uh, lived a life of service as well as um, writing lovely words on pages. Uh, the tune for this comes from a kind of obscure guy, William Jude. Not much is known about him uh, other than the fact that he was a well-respected organist and authority on church music in the Liverpool and Manchester areas of England. Um, he did do a world lecture tour and made it all the way down to New Zealand and Australia. Um, but this is his only tune that we use regularly today. So um, we'll all probably come to that fate someday. But the good news is Jesus calls us. So we continue to dance. Um, even on to obscurity and death uh, into wondrous new realities. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his clear voice sounding, saying, Christian, follow me. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us in your mercy, Savior, make us hear your call. Give us hearts to your obedience, serve and love you best of all. This tune comes to us um, with its text, also from the Victorian period, so it has a little sweetness. On Sunday we'll be doing a slightly different treatment uh, of the same material, same tune, same text, uh, but here I'm doing it straight up, no chaser. Still he calls in cares 
and pleasures. Christian love me more than these. Jesus calls us in your mercy. Savior, make us hear your call. Give our hearts to your obedience. Serve and love you best of all. Serve and love you best of all. So wherever Jesus is leading us, calling us, uh, may we heed that call, that invitation to dance along with him into the new creation. Thank you for joining me tonight as we enter into uh, these readings and this new reality and uh, continue to explore where we are being called today. Peace be with you, friends.